Hello, and welcome to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by New Patients Incorporated. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated, and along with me once again is my friend and partner and the Chief Executive Officer of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Dental Marketing Mastery Podcast Series. We're so glad to have you here. Hello, Howie. Ah, how you doing, Mark? All right, man. It's uh, June. What is it? June 21st. Yes, it is. And um, we have basically a a fairly new subject to to speak about. Yes, we do. After doing 160 of these, we search for (laughs) unique things to talk about. (laughs) Right? Yeah. And this one's called High Tech for 169 bucks. 169 bucks? You're kidding. You can be high tech for 169 bucks? <laughs> Save I, yourself a lot of trouble, I too. I can't even buy an iPad for 169 bucks. <laughs> so what do we mean when we say high tech for 169 bucks? So I got I to take a, a trip backward. I'm not sure people understand at least part of what we do. Part of our job, or at least the way we look at our role to serve our client base, is to look for any way that they can spend as small of a portion of their budget as possible for the greatest impact. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Some of that has to do, obviously, with digital marketing. Some of that has to do with offline marketing. And some of it has to do with marketing software. There's marketing software tools that are available to dentists and they may or may not know about them. And certainly if there's eight or nine of them, they may or may not want to try them all (laughs) and vet them until they find the one that works, you know, the best for their needs. So we go do that for them. So, uh, and a couple of examples like local med online scheduling. When we first vetted local med, it was light years ahead of everybody else. From an online scheduling integration standpoint, I don't know how many thousands of clients they have, but I know we have many, many, many clients on local med and they're all wonderfully happy. As long as you keep marketing, then it provides a, a value and it provides a return um, you know, on a couple hundred bucks a month and um, people continue with it. And then we, um, we searched out, this one was actually not without controversy. We searched out the, um, the best automated uh, review system that we could find. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That did not exploit the customer with long-term contracts and did not take their reviews away and did not threaten the the customer in any way at all, whether they were still a customer or they left. Or, or hold their reviews hostage. Or hold like, their reviews hostage. Exactly. That was like, believe it or not, all those, th- all those things <laughs> that you would look at and go, why would anybody buy those? <laughs> like almost every dentist owns them. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Anyway, so we set out to find, because reviews are so incredibly important, right? Yeah. And um, they're important on your Google local. They're important on your offline. They're important on digital. They're important on everything. So, you know, how do you automate those in a way that the dentist is not being taken advantage of? And um, we brought forward, you know, Crusader, MPI Crusader. So, and none of these are ours. We're not software developers. These are the best software packages that we resell. It's kind of funny. Dennis will say, well, you don't write the software. I'll just go buy it direct. We're like, oh, okay. That's fine. You're not going to get a better price. You know, we can say price. We can do the installs and give you the best practices on how all of our clients are using them. You know, how you, how they're getting the most from each one. But if you want to go buy it direct, okay. You know, that's, that's certainly up to you. And to those dentists, I always say, well, then you must not buy anything from Shine or Patterson because neither of those companies ever developed anything. Exactly. <laughs> like, they just resell everything you buy. <laughs> so. You know, whatever, right? So, so we, but we continue. We continue to find the best in class um, marketing software tools available for dentists and offer them to our client base. So, anyway, so which brings us to today 106, how to get high tech for 169 bucks. And at least one of us on this podcast has actually sat in the front of a dental practice, answered the phones, booked appointments, and his name is not Alan. <laughs> Um, did billing, understands insurance and all that other stuff. Right. And, and, and having gone through that, um, process myself many, many years ago, we, um, it wasn't a struggle to hand the patient a form. Hi, Bob, how you doing? It's been six months. Here's what you said last time. (laughs) Tell me what you're going to say this time, sign your name and put a date on it. Right. 
because, you know, it was really no big deal back. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago it was that I ran a front desk, but I'll tell you it's many, a couple decades or, or more. Anyway, so fast forward. Well, now there's a whole bunch of things that matter, right? There's multiple forms. There's HIPAA. Oh, yes. Back when I was at the front desk, <laughs> HIPAA was something from Africa, right? There was, who cared? Who cared about HIPAA? We didn't, you know, there was, there was, who cares? Yeah. So, and then there's this whole on digital online thing, uh, convenience, convenience to the patient and convenience because now you have multiple forms. We, uh, we run into practices with like 12, 14 different forms because they have forms for cosmetics, forms for clear aligners. They have different intake forms, patient intake forms for different things. I'm like, oh my God, if I was back 20 years ago running the front desk, I'd need a whole cabinet just with empty forms <laughs> that I would have to organize by form name, right? And then pull it out when I needed form name and hand it to the patient. And then I thought, oh crap, no patient in the history of dentistry ever filled out a form completely anyway. So then you have that whole thing. Well, if it's on paper, then you, you know, did they really complete it? Or actually, what does it mean? Can I understand what they wrote, right? There's yeah. just a million things. And oh my God, what if the dentist actually writes on it with their handwriting, right? Yeah, then you're, you're, you're gone. Then you're toast, right? <laughs> so, so I'm sitting there thinking about this and we were working on other projects and I thought, you know what, I'm going to chase down all the, because, oh, oh, wait, then COVID happened. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now you need a form for a form, right? <laughs> like, here's your patient intake form. Here's your COVID form. Here's your HIPAA form. Oh my God. It's just like, it's like forms to like the 10th power now. Right. And then, and then good luck if you're trying to be go, uh, trying to go paperless, like yeah, everyone yeah, yeah, wants yeah, yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so now we have this gigantic file cabinet with empty forms that turn into somewhat completed forms, which also have to be what? They have to be filed again, right? So you have all this, oh my God, it's terrible. And you don't even know which one was filled in, which one wasn't. And then there's standard of care. Like you have to have certain forms filled out with information, disclaimers, right? Um, for your patients with certain procedures, like, oh, geez. So anyway, so I got to thinking and I got to searching and I said, well, there has to be a way for us. And and my angle was actually on marketing. Like it's the same angle as uh, as online scheduling. See, at the beginning of online scheduling, when uh, the original developer of, of Local Med reached out to me and we started, we had a real long discussion. It was a great discussion. We were laughing at the end. I said, dude, nobody's, no dentist is going to allow you to control their schedule. And then, you know, a year later, the maturity of the product got to be such that I thought, well, maybe this is the tipping point where the consumer demand for efficiency and high tech image with dentists reaches that, that point. Right. 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 And you know what? Four years later, four and a half years later, you know, they probably have 10,000 customers now. You know, it's not a fad. I mean, it's a real thing. Right. So I'm sitting there thinking of that and I'm thinking to myself, well, how can we improve our clients' high tech image, you know, without being a software developer? So I went out into the woods, into the into the plains of America, and I was scoping out the best forms software. And there's a few. Not just forms, integrated forms, because we used to send our website clients to, I, I forget, patientforms.com or some like generic forms company. And um, it was just generic kind of vanilla. It didn't really make anything more efficient, didn't integrate with their practice management software, didn't put all their forms in one place, which makes it simple for the front desk, didn't tell you if somebody didn't fill out their form, didn't do any of that stuff. It was just a form. And I was kind of embarrassed of all that solution. So I went out and I went out looking for the best most complete, most service oriented, so people would actually use it, forms software specifically for dentistry that integrates with, you know, the popular practice management software. And we found it and it's actually really, <laughs> I think back, to, you know, to 20 years ago and I was running the front desk and I was multiplying in my head forms times 10. And I was thinking to myself, I didn't even like forms times one. You know what I mean? Like forms times 10, how the hell are you going to deal with that? <laughs> and um and this this product just it just automates all of it. If um you know if the patient needs one, it knows. If the patient gets one, it knows. If the patient doesn't fill it out completely, it knows and tells the patient. <laughs> and the front the front desk person would know everyone that completed one, all the people that didn't complete one, and and drop all that stuff in a central place where anyone that has access to it or a password has instant access, including the dentist to 
everything. And then you can put the forms online, you put them on your scheduler, you can put them on your Google local page, on your Facebook page, you can put access to these forms literally on, well, anywhere, right? Except for paper, (laughs) right? Because they're online forms, they're not supposed to be paper forms. But what this does is it gives, well, first of all, the, the impact on the consumer is is va- it, it, I'm done. If you just talk to any busy mom or watch a busy mom, watch her day, the last thing she wants to do is have something hanging that she hasn't completed yet. She's already got 94,217 tasks, right, for today. And when she's working on something like making an appointment, she'd really like to get the forms electronically, boom, 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 get them done, maybe for her, her husband, her child, whatever, and be done. Not, here's another task, here's another task, here's another task. And another thing that helps is if I fill all this stuff out at home at my leisure, I don't have to show up 15, 20 minutes early for my appointment. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I, I mean, I'm done. I, I can show up if my appointment's at 5.15. If I want, I can show up at 5.10, 5.10, you know, 5.12. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm not going to miss anything. And they're not going to miss anything. And, and my, you know, my family's going to be the doctor's going to have and his team or her team are going to have all the information they need to do a good job taking care of my family. I don't have to worry about that either. Right. And if I forgot something or if they need clarification for something, there's a you know, there's a process involved. It's wonderful. And and the whole team, this is another piece that maybe dentists don't realize. The whole team knows that the patient got the form and filled it out completely. And and we understand, in other words, it passed muster so that we're not asking patients to fill out the same form twice. Exactly. I know nobody listening to this ever <laughs> thinks that happens in your practice, okay? Yes, it does. But it does. <laughs> happens all the time, okay? Because there's paper everywhere. So anyway, so yeah, so it'll reduce the time for patients that have to, to wait for anything. It will cement the appointment. Like if you were, if you made an appointment and you weren't really going to keep your appointment, you weren't really sure yet, would you fill out the forms? I wouldn't. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so if you get an appointment, maybe they call and they, they make an appointment, it's a new patient and they don't fill out your forms. You really think they're going to show? It's the first leading indicator of a missed appointments is a missed, is a missed form fill. Right. So this gives your front desk all kinds of information automatically that they wouldn't have gotten before, you know, to potentially help, you know, keep your schedule full or at least keep their eyes out for a possible broken appointment, missed appointment coming up. Right. Another thing with forms, (laughs) I think back, we used to have like we had a desk and your phone and a computer screen and you'd have charts and it would usually be, you know, five or six of the charts for the patients who are due to walk in through their front door and probably five or six of the charts that patients that were already here that had already left. They're usually left and right, right and left or high and low, whatever. However, you normally organize your front desk. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, that entire environment is a gigantic HIPAA violation these days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the whole thing is a HIPAA violation, right? Yeah. So, and then I think about <laughs> video and I'm thinking about these security systems that video this stuff. And I'm thinking about, oh my God, does somebody get a hold of that? There's patient information literally everywhere, right? Yes. Yes. So. Huge liability potentially enormous, right there. Like, enormous liability. I mean, I, like you and I, we would never, you know, we would never sue anybody for a HIPAA violation, right? But everybody isn't you and I, right? right? I mean, there's there's people who out <laughs> who would. Anyway, so reduce the HIPAA violations and the front. I tried to figure out, it was hard for me because back in the day, I only really had a couple of forms to deal with. You have your medical history form. Yeah, no, I, we had an extra form for allergies. We had, we actually had a welcome form. We had a form for a treatment plan acceptance. We had a form for medical history. We had like four or five forms uh, back in the day. And we would pull them out when we needed them, as we needed them. Oh, yeah, there was another one for guardianship. Yep. Like if a mom was bringing a seven-year-old or a 10-year-old and all that stuff. Anyway, um, and I thought to myself, well, how long did that really take? Because you never really stop and take... You never take inventory on, on on the little tiny pieces of seconds or minutes that these things, these little process take you. Just reach, find, give, hand it to them, get it back, refile, well, find their file again, refile it, all that stuff. That's really all you do. You never really count that up. But if you figure maybe what, 
three minutes per patient. That's pretty fast. But let's just say three minutes per patient. And there's what, 20, let's say 20 patients each day. Yeah. Huge time savings right there. That's an hour. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole hour a day, right? Where you don't have to do that. And you can actually, you have, might actually have time to look the patient in the eye and, um, and connect with them, which is, a, I mean, besides the high tech side, we joke around with our podcast title, high tech for 169 bucks. But maybe the real value is just having the time back. Yes. To connect with the patient on a personal level. Yes. So they actually know your, their, your name. How many times have we, have we heard of Dennis getting a bad review because, oh, the front desk was just too busy to I pay know, attention to me? I know. You know? Well, okay. <laughs> the whole visit, I felt rushed. How many times was that on a Google review, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've seen it a lot. A million times. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So, and then there's uh, one of the questions I had actually when I was doing this, because I thought, I thought that these forms companies, they'd have their own forms. And then I thought, well, I know dentists. And if you give six dentists the choice of where to go for lunch, you're going to end up at six different places, right? So having just a standard forms library, plus back in my soft end days, we actually started building forms libraries and we basically stopped <laughs> because by the time we were done, there was 6,941 <laughs> options <laughs> because of all the input we got from our clients, right? So exactly. I thought to myself, well, this ain't going to work, you know, because I guess that all the forms companies must have just standardized, you know, form libraries that the dentist has to adapt to. And honestly, that's wrong. What they do is they take the doctor's existing form and they digitize it. So the form is the same. It's not different. So, yeah. <laughs> so the, you know, even your established patients will look at it and go, wow, this is an upgrade. I mean, normally I had to come in 20 minutes early to fill out all this crap. And now, now you just email it to me as, as part of the normal routine before my appointment. I can, I can fill it in whenever. It doesn't matter. That's cool. Right? Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't have to be a new form that they're not familiar with. So everybody's familiar with the form and they get done. Oh, here's the other thing. Everybody's used to these forms, the medical history forms, right? It says, you know, do you have cancer? Do you have, are you allergic, to, are you allergic to all this yeah. crap? Right. And there's like, there's like 74 of these things. And there's, <laughs> there's a yes column and a no column. And every human being on earth just goes up to the nose and just draws a line down the whole freaking column. They don't, does anybody really go check, 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 check? Nobody does that. They just go, <laughs> bam. No, I don't have any of this stuff, right? <laughs> Is that going to hold up in court? Oh, boy. <laughs> Seriously, right? Oh. Okay. If somebody, if, if somebody, if there's a malpractice claim on you and you accepted that form, where's the line? What did the line mean? Did you question this patient? Why didn't you question this patient? See what I'm saying? See where we're going? Okay. Yeah. So it's not just marketing. It's not just high tech image. It's not just efficiency. So you can connect with your patient. It's actually all those things. And maybe even some legal protection from HIPAA and from lawsuits. Because if you got it and you got it digitized and you got it locked away, you're good. So yeah, high tech for 169 actually, 169 a month is what this, the digital forms costs. And it only works, well, not only, I mean, it's probably 80% of the software out there. It works with EagleSoft, Dentrix, and Open Dental users. So if you're a, an EagleSoft, Dentrix, or Open Dental user, you can just log on to our website, newpatientsync.com. I think there's a banner in the middle of the homepage that talks about digital forms. And just have one of our folks show it to you, like a lunch and learn, just sit back with a ham sandwich and let them share a screen and show it to you. Then you can make your own decision. But anyway, um, I'm not going to call this a game changer, but it'll catch a lot of dental offices up because a lot of dental offices are still back not being high tech with their patient base and their new patients that are coming in. And it, I think it hurts them more than they think. Yeah, so I do too. I do too. Pre-digital, it, it might as well be prehistoric. Yeah. Well, okay. I wouldn't go that far, but how we did, that's fine. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's all the, that's what all the hubbub is about. It's, um, it's another piece of software that we found that we vetted them all. 
actually on that page on our website, there's a little graph with other people's software. So you can see the capabilities like in a little chart, a little infographic. And um, I don't know, take a look at it and do what you think is best for your practice. But for those who are on paper right now, oh my God, what a monumental improvement that'll be. Yeah, there's help on the way. Well, thank you. Thank you for listening. We're going to leave you with that today. I've got to go fix my uh, broken AC. It's only 114 here. (laughs) So (laughs) that's what I'm doing today, Mark. All right. Well, I'm sure you're not. (laughs) No, I'm not. (laughs) We'll leave your house and the office has air, right? Oh, yeah. The office is fine. Okay. Yeah. All of our employees. My house is not. It was 97 (laughs) degrees inside my house last night. (laughs) Okay. Well, open windows, get a fan. (laughs) All right. All right, dude. All right. Didn't it wouldn't matter. All right. Thank you, my friends. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast today. You can get all of our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, and Libsyn.com and on our website, newpatientsinc.com.